Hello everyone, welcome to Vicar John Ministries. I'm Pastor John Berg, Vicar John, and this is our weekly worship service. And I thank you for being here. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas and you've had a Happy New Year so far, as we are just in the beginning of things. Um, just uh, for announcements today, uh, you can find us on Facebook and YouTube under Vicar John, and our website is vicarjohn.com. And we've been having a little trouble with the website lately, but uh, uh, it's there. Um, and uh, uh, I would, uh, you can, you, it'll, it'll be there, uh, trust me, so uh, on that. Uh, also, um, my sermons may be a little bit more pointed towards a, a church for the next little while. I am filling in for my friend and colleague, Pastor Steve, who passed away uh, just before Christmas, and I'm going to be there a couple times a month, and uh, therefore... Uh, Sermons may change up just a little bit as, as we have uh, uh, another directed audience uh, there. So anyway, it shouldn't really matter too much because I kind of have the same message all the time. Anyway, also, we can you can pause at any time during the uh, worship service and play some music from uh, YouTube or wherever. Uh, and uh, some suggestions for this week as we are still in the Christmas season. Uh, so here's any Christmas a uh, hymn that you'd like or song or praise song uh, he, some suggestions angels from the realms of glory what child is this we three kings and of course a, a favorite go tell it on the mountain uh, always good songs and and uh, uh, just pause at any time during the worship service and play one of these or two or all of them uh, so anyway, also during our prayer time in a moment, I'll ask you to stop, push the pause button as you go into a time of prayer, which is so very, very important uh, that we do this. And uh, um, I can't stress enough how, how important this is. Anyway, the title of, uh, of to this, uh, this week's sermon is, I took it from uh, a, an old song way back in the 60s. It's called, It's Good News Week. So uh, anyway, uh, let us uh, bring in the hour of worship. Let us open with a word of prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we, we thank you so much for everything you do, and we praise you, Lord, to the highest. And today we ask that you put the Holy Spirit upon us as we come to worship you and only you. And if there's any bad spirits among us, no matter where we are, Lord, just cast them out and help us to focus on you. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our proverb this week, we're back to Proverbs again, comes from Proverbs 20, verses 17. And it says, Food gained by fraud tastes sweet to a man, but he ends up with a mouthful of gravel. Hmm, think about that one a little bit. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 72, um, various verses there. Uh, he will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, through all generations. He will be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days the righteous will flourish, prosperity will abound till the moon is no more. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Wonderful words. Now we come to our time of, uh, of prayer. As I mentioned just a moment ago, and, and also I want you to think about the God moments that have happened to you in the past week, um, whatever they may be. Uh, we uh, were out and visited the, uh, the new church that we're serving. We went out there and preached. What a wonderful, wonderful day that was, uh, uh, even though in the sadness that surrounds everything. Uh, we had a snowstorm this week. Lots of things been happening for God. God moments for us. What are yours? Please remember them. Now let's go into our time of prayer. Pray with me. Oh gracious Lord, Lord of all, we praise you and thank you for this abundant life you have given us. We are not worthy and we confess all our wrongdoings to you. Please forgive us and help us to live better lives for you. We pray this in the name of your newborn son, Jesus Christ. And now we come to you in a moment of silent prayer. Please uh, push the pause button and go into a time of prayer. Oh. 
Well, gracious Lord, we, we thank you and praise you once again, Lord. And as we look about the world, we see all the bad things happening. It seems that the news can't really do anything but talk about bad things. And, and maybe that's because uh, the king of evil is in charge of things, and, and that's the way it is. But, but uh, um, help us to remember that with you, we can have better lives. It's been scientifically proven that our lives will be better. They'll be longer. They'll have better quality. Lord, just help us to concentrate on the good things that you provide. And just a better life is one of them on the top of the list. Help us to know this and to proceed like we, like we do know this and we love you. We just thank you for this, Lord. Lord, we would like to hold up some people to you today and ask that you praise them in ways that are pleasing to you. We're thinking of our hurting and poor that are everywhere, Lord. Uh, help us to continue what we have did over Christmas by helping these people and keep, uh, keep doing it throughout the year. Lord, we, we ask that you be with uh, our leaders wherever, wherever they may be throughout the world in this country, Lord, uh, as, as none of them seem to know you although some claim that they do. Uh, I'm not so sure, Lord, and it's not for me to know, but uh, just help them to be do a better job of leading. Lord, we ask that you be with our troops wherever they may be. We ask that you be with our, our communities, Lord, as, as we are in uh, winter time now and, and help us to come back safely next week. Uh, special prayer request this week, I ask that you be with uh, uh, Shirley and, and Steve's family, Lord, and just bless them richly, Lord. Uh, he was a faithful servant of yours, Lord. And, and we just praise you. I praise you that I got to know him, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for all the things you give us, Lord, and and, uh, and just be with us all the time during this new year. And, and uh, we just love you as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our uh, scripture lesson this week comes from Colossians 3, uh, uh, verses 1, or 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have, may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and, and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus, give, giving thanks to, to God the Father through him. The words of God for the people of God and all God's people said, praise be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you once again and we ask that the words of my mouth be your words and they fall upon, upon open ears and minds and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would guess that this is the last day off for many people after this New Year's weekend and our holidays. I know that when I uh, worked at the post office years ago, we always liked Christmas and, and New Year's uh, when they were on a Friday or a Monday so that we could get an extra day off, you know, for the long weekend. I also know that this is, you know, not really the right uh, way to be thinking about this, and it can get us in trouble. But sometimes it's hard not to think like this when everyone else around you is doing the same thing. Whether or not we have Friday off or Monday off is really quite minor.
quite minor. But I have seen people get very upset about this. Uh, uh, I've sometimes wondered what would happen if something really important came up in their lives. Today we're going to look at the book of Colossians a little bit that Paul wrote while he was in prison. Uh, Paul would have every right to complain because of this, and yet because of this he does the very opposite. He calls us together to be God's chosen people. He is not just talking to the Colossians here. He is talking to us also. You may not think of this too often, but you are God's chosen people. There was some trouble in the church in Colossian, the Colossian church, and this story from Chris Talton reminds us that this happens also today. Uh, it seems that the pastor and the music director didn't like each other very much. We never had that problem as, as Sharon was our music director and, and you know, we kind of like each other a lot. Uh, anyway, one Sunday, the preacher talked about commitment and dedicating ourselves to service. The choir director led the choir in singing, I shall not be moved. The next Sunday, the pastor talked about giving and how we should gladly give uh, to the work of the Lord. The choir leader led in the singing of Jesus Paid It All. The next Sunday, the sermon was on gossiping and how we, we, we should be watching our tongues. The hymn that day was, I Love to Tell the Story. The feud continued, and the next Sunday, the preacher told the congregation that he was considering resigning. The choir uh, then sang, Oh, Why Not Tonight? That was enough for the pastor. I'm not done yet. And he resigned the next week saying that Jesus had called him here and now Jesus was calling him away. That Sunday, the choir sang, What a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> this is a humorous example of just how broken we are and sometimes how we do not act like God's chosen people. So just how do we act then if we are God's chosen people? I, I love how Paul starts here out here. He is telling us that he's telling you uh, that you are holy and dearly loved. This is one of the most important things for you to remember. You are loved by God. You are set apart from all the other people who don't know Christ. You are holy. It is also important to remember here that that we are not perfect. Just because you're holy doesn't mean you're perfect. We have many flaws. We are prone to sin. We like to gossip about others. We like to tell tall tales. We like to have bad thoughts about others. But none of this, none of this will ever separate us from the love of God. He loves you in spite of you. This is the good news, and this is how Paul starts this out. You are holy and loved. I would like you to grab onto that feeling today. Uh, I know that some of you might not feel very loved today, but just, just humor me a little bit here. Imagine, now just imagine, use your imagination, that this massive, huge God of ours has wrapped his great big arms around you and is absolutely flooding you with his love. Just flooding you with this love. Now, hold on to this thought. When you are in this position with God, then you can clothe yourself in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. When, when God is all wrapped up in your life like this, then all these things that come from Him can flow out of you. I have mentioned before uh, that you feel better when you are helping others. We talked about that last week. As God's chosen people, we have compassion on others. We will treat everyone as if they were a child of God. We will be kind to those who are different from us. When someone of a different race uh, walks in our doors, we will welcome them. When a poor person walks through our doors, we will welcome them. This is the compassion and kindness of the chosen people. I know that oftentimes we like to think that uh, the chosen people are the Jews. The Bible refers to this, and, and, and of course this is true. But all that changed just a little bit when Jesus came along. Jesus extended uh, the Jewish faith to all of us. Judaism took the next step forward 
when Jesus came to us as a baby. I believe that the true Jew today is a, is a follower of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are all included, every one of us, in all of these writings. We are also called to be humble. God had this whole thing planned perfectly long before we ever came along. The, the story of, of humankind is the history of God, and, and we are just a part of it. Uh, we don't have to dwell on it, or we don't have to flaunt it. As God's chosen ones, uh, you are to go out and be the hands and feet of Jesus wherever you go. And you do this, of course, with gentleness and patience. I hope that you can begin to feel all these things, and I, I really hope that you they, they will pour forth from you as you go out and meet new people. I, I sometimes think that it, it is tragic how we evangelize people around us. Now, don't get me wrong here. Many do a good job. Sometimes we need to go out and take drastic measures. But it doesn't do much good to go out and tell someone that their religion is all wrong. It doesn't do much good to go out and tell them that their lifestyle is all wrong. It doesn't do much good to tell these people that their habits or anything else are all wrong. If this is what we are doing, we could just as well walk up to the, uh, someone and tell them that they're just plain stupid if they didn't disagree with us. And in the process of doing this, we will lose people forever. Forever, my friends, is a long time. We don't want to do this. But if you pay attention to some of the people and pastors around you, you will find that this is exactly what they are doing. Also, we seem to have built uh, this fence around ourselves and we only let certain people through the gate. Uh, this isn't how uh, we are to let God's love flow out of us. We are to use compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience to make our point. It is only then that we will be agents of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is only then that we will begin to attract attract people to Jesus. I know that these things are not uh, always the easiest things to do, but they are what we are called to do. So the next time you're thinking about not liking someone because of their poorness or color or orientation, stop yourself. Stop yourself. Let Jesus flow out of you. Don't hinder these people from coming to Jesus. They need Jesus just as much as you do, and maybe even a little bit more. When you start to do all these things, then the next thing that comes along naturally is that you forgive them for what they do. Uh, you forgive your spouse. You forget, forgive your, your sons and daughters you, and your neighbors and, your, and, and even strangers. You forgive people of other religions and beliefs. You forgive people of, of different lifestyles or different politics. That is what you are supposed to do. That's what you do. Now, I know there's got to be someone who's hearing this today who finds that it is just impossible to forgive. Uh, the infraction against you has just been too great. We have talked of forgiveness before and how it is a process in, in many cases. Some, sometimes it just doesn't come about suddenly. It takes time and that is okay. That's okay. But please remember that the forgiveness of others always begins with, the, uh, with, with uh, uh, getting forgiveness from God. It always begins with getting uh, forgiveness from God. I'm sure that if you look at your own life, you will find that you are not at all worthy of the forgiveness of Jesus. There's not a person who's listening today who is worthy of this, and yet, and yet, Jesus still forgives you. Remember this as you work your way through forgiveness. You are no more worthy of forgiveness, the forgiveness you want to extend or receive, than the person at the other end is worthy of forgiveness. But this is part of being the chosen people. Uh, you forgive no matter what the circumstances. So now we have all these things, compassion, forgiveness, humbleness, which are all bound together with love, with love. This is the tie 
that binds us together. We come to receive this and worship every week. We, th this, is, this is so much more. Uh, this, is, this is what so much of the world is looking for in all the wrong places. If we allow it to happen, love will conquer uh, all in our lives. And that's a good, good thing. Now I fully realize uh, just how hard it is to maintain this, but let's be real here. It's hard to even achieve this. Uh, we are constantly being bombarded by that, by Satan. This is that evil monster. He's there everywhere we turn. Uh, he makes us get into fights about health care and homosexuality, elections and illegal al aliens. He, he, he makes us fight against our husbands and wives, our children, and sometimes anyone who happens to be near. We saw this in our opening story. He causes fights between pastors and music directors and anyone else who happens to get in the way. We definitely know the ways of Satan because he is everywhere we look in this world. And it is because of Satan being so dominant in our world and society that we find it hard to be able to focus on what is good and true. We find it hard to concentrate on these good traits that Paul is pointing out to us in this passage. I, I also know and will guarantee that if you follow these, these good ways of life, you will have a better life. You will live longer. You will be happier. It's been proven scientifically. It has been proven that uh, faithful Christians have far better lives than those who don't know Jesus. So, with all this in mind, all this good stuff happening to you, then let the peace of Jesus, the peace of Jesus, rule your heart. Now, are you still holding on to the thought of those loving arms of God wrapped around you? Okay, remember that? They're just wrapped around you. If you are, then you have to be close to feeling all these things that we've been talking about, which in turn will bring you peace. Hopefully you can begin to feel this as you let go and let God take over. Let Him take over as this Christmas season is winding down. Just let yourself fall into the arms of our loving God who loves you beyond all our comprehension. Then Paul goes on to talk, uh, tell us to be thankful. Here's another area that we've let slip a little bit. We often think that, think that we don't have to give thanks to people uh, when, uh, when they help us out. We live in a society that really doesn't do thank you notes very much anymore. I've heard of a business in the area that, that received uh, funds from a church in the area for several years, and they never even acknowledged that they received anything, let alone uh, say thank you for it. But if you really think about it, this is just Satan at work again. Uh, the important part of our, our Thanksgiving should be thanksgiving to God. All our thanksgiving should begin with God. Only after we have given God the proper thanks are we able to thank anyone else. Therefore, if you are giving to ungodly organizations, then, then we really shouldn't expect a thank you. So always uh, begin uh, your thanksgiving with God. Uh, sometimes I feel I get in a rut with my prayer life, especially uh, when I lead worship uh, like this or in a church. Um, I, I feel like this because I, I usually always uh, begin my prayer by first praising the Lord for what He's done and then thanking the Lord or, or thanking and then praising. Sometimes I feel that I should do something different because you probably get a little tired of hearing the 